Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Liquid Brain. So I have recently found out that PyTorch, uh, which is actually another very famous machine learning library, has been available to R since like a month or two ago. So for those that don't are not familiar with all this thing, they're very they're two very famous library for coding machine learning. So one of them is TensorFlow. So that's developed by Google, and those are the ones that I've been using in the past a year or two for all the machine learning um, code that have runs. And the problem with TensorFlow and Keras is that they actually does not natively support in R, and I don't want to transfer all things into Python, and I'm not really that good of a Python programmer, so I want to do things in R. And in order for them, in order for Keras and TensorFlow to be run in R Studio environment, you have to go through something called a reticulate package. So what they do is that they actually emulate the kind of Python environment in R. So we can actually use Python packages, but use R as the front end. So uh, it is great that you are able to just use, but of course, um, there'll be some uh, minor, that there'll be increased complexity and increased complexity, increase the problem and decrease the efficiency um, on how it's functioned. So let's say you want to run a Docker image on that code in our script, you, you the, the Docker image should be twice as big because not only you have to install R, you also have to install Python on that things itself and there's more updates on the back end to be run so torch for r has actually just been released in september 20 if i'm not wrong in the r studio blog that i found so what difference is that this allow for native support in our system because it's based on the c library so you no longer have to care about your python environment in your computer in order to run this you just have to run it on your uh, r, r studio and our system so uh, today, I just want to show you some very, very simple uh, neural network uh, and how to you run this neural network in the Torch environment in our studio. Okay, um, one thing is that I haven't got CUDA running. I'm not sure why. I've tried 10.2. So it's the, the CUDA support for TensorFlow is actually 10.0. So you need to update to 10.1 or 10.2 for Torch R to work. But I haven't got it working. I don't know why. And I will I'll update next time with a much complicated code. So today is just a simple neural network on Iris. Okay. So the first thing is to actually check. Uh, of course, the first thing is to install the package. I'm not gonna think. I think you already know that. So you go to package manager, Torch, and just press install, and that will install the environment. And after you install, remember to run library, library Torch to include the package into your environment. And that will actually download another 160 megabyte of documentation that will be installed on your local computer. And the first thing I always run is actually check if CUDA is available. And they will actually select the Torch device based on the best thing that you have. Because if I actually run CUDA now, it will just give me a lot of error message and it doesn't work. Okay, so PyTorch again is also relatively straightforward compared to the compared to, to the Keras and TensorFlow because you no longer have to go through Keras to, into TensorFlow. But you know, Keras is more simple and so on, but we're not talking about them two today. So in, in PyTorch, uh, sorry, in Torch for R, how do you define a network is very similar on how you define a function actually. So in this case, the model is actually using a function called NN SQL, where you define your layer individually. Okay, so how do you do that is that you just put model equals to NN sequential, that's a sequential neural network. Layer one is, um, you have a four input neuron and eight output neurons. So this is your overall input into your network, there's four inputs, and you're running a ReLU activation function for the layer one. On layer two, you're taking the eight input from layer one and pass it into a 16 neuron output. And this is again, another ReLU um, activator function, and you pass it to the third layer, where you pass the 16 neurons back into three. So this will be four to eight, eight to 16, and 16 back into three. So the overall ne network structure has a four neurons input and a three neurons output. Okay, so remember that. So here we are trying to get um, a iris data set to work. So what all this complicated function actually means is just to split the data set into test and um, training. So what that's do is that you can actually have uh, here X train and Y train. Let's go to X train. Oh, it doesn't. So yeah, so it's not, not as easy to visualize. But remember in the Iris data set, 
you actually have four uh, parameters per, per species. Okay, so what does that is that they have sepal length, sepal width, petal length, and petal width. So these are the four input that we want to do. And the species, which is the species of the flower, is actually the output that we want. So we want to take these four input and generate an output. But before we can do that, uh, unlike cross and TensorFlow, we just pass a matrix in. We actually have to convert the matrix, uh, pass it as a numeric, or pass it as a... Uh, yeah, you have to pass the thing as a matrix and then pass it as a numeric and then again pass it as a torch tensor. So the, the tensor helps the PyTorch to calculate better as well as faster. And not only that, you also have to convert that into a tensor specific data type. So in this case, you are the four, one, two, three, four, the pedal and sample length and width is converted into a torch float, which is a floating point. And the, the species is converted into a torch long, which is kind of a string long format um, tensor thingy. Okay, so remember, um, floating point going to float, uh, your species here go into long. Okay, once that is done, we define our criteria, which is our cross loss entropy. So that's the cost and optimizer. So that's part of the, the, the training and loss function, pro not loss function, that's part of the training and optimizer process. Usually just leave it at default and most of the time you only change them when you have very a very good outcome and just do a little bit of fine tuning. Otherwise, usually we try to not touch the learning rate and so on. And this is the important one. So when you train the network, you actually use a for loop. Okay, so for what I is in how many epochs. So we are, we are trying to get epochs. So the first to the 100 epochs over here, first, of, first thing first, we set optimizers optimizer to, to zero so we're going to reset optimizer before we start training network and we just define this thing so what does this does is that the model which is what we we have uh, defined earlier like that will take the four input and the three output okay so what this does is that you put in x train so if you go to x train here the environment you actually can see that no, not this one this one Okay, you can see that this is the, the sample length and pedal width. So these are the four input every row. So every row we fit in the four input sequ sequentially. Okay, and then the, the model should be able to output the Y predict. Okay, so the Y predict is the, the what is that called? The, um, the species that we want just now. Okay, so you can see there's three columns here. So the three columns are actually the first one refers to the, the what is that called? The, the Sentosa, Versicola, and Virginica. So that's why they are, they're, but they're all in numbers because you know, computers deal with number better. And that's something that I read, I preferred on Keras. And I think Keras is a little bit more straightforward with, you know, the first neuron is Sentosa, the second neuron is that. So this is the probability of going into each neuron. Okay, so the loss function will be the criteria and the, and this is the the loss backward is the um, the back propagation step and again an optimizer step for to change the learning rate so that we don't overfit the so we don't overshoot the local minimum that we want. Okay, so check in training this will be the, the output process so that's the verbal equivalent of a, of Keras that how, what kind of um, accuracy and what kind of uh, epoch shall we running on in this case so so what we end up is when you run this function it will actually give you for every 10 um, epochs you give you a loss so what is the total loss yeah so you you want to have a, a practically a, the lower number of loss means the more more accurate your your network becomes and the accuracy will become a uh, zero and when your accuracy is zero, I don't know why, because it's actually 100% correct. But the, the, I think the accuracy is something wrong with it. I need to check on this. Okay, so what that means is that now we have gone through 100, 100 epoch, we have a very low loss and accuracy of zero means it's 100% accurate. I assume so. I'm not sure why the, 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 the script is, is that I follow. Uh, I actually copied this from, from the website over here. I did not code this thing myself. Okay, so... Once we have done the model, so what we can do now is actually just fit in the input. Okay, so this is actually, let me just 
restructure this so it's a little bit easier. So now we want to predict that what the things that we have done, right? So I would say this is called new input. So we just put a new input back into the model. So what we I've done here is actually just use the same logic that we've done with the training data set above, which is convert the first four column. So sorry, one to five means the first five row, uh, minus five, the first four column, because we're to delete the fifth column. So if I actually just show you this, it's actually four columns and five rows, convert to a matrix, converts to a torch tensor, and convert everything to a float data type and then convert into a new input and put a new input into the model. And as you can see, um, the, because the first five of Iris data set, let me just do that again, it's all, it's all Sentosa. So you can see that when I'm putting the, the new output into my model, I always have the highest number in the first column. So the first column refers to the probability of this being correct. So in this case, 33, 30, 31, 29, 34. So they all refers to the first um, column, which is Satosa, and the second two will be slightly lower. And that's how you will be able to predict and do the classification using a PyTorch in a very, very simple and short environment. And yes, you can also use Keras on PyTorch, which I will try to do that next time. And for the time being, I hope um, I will continue to learn on PyTorch. It sounds, sorry, I'll continue to learn on the, the Torch 4 and I, I hope that I can integrate this into some other projects soon. Okay, for now, goodbye.